This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. The Bible is a book that was written in terms of farming, shepherding, and sowing. All these things are a bit lost in today's culture. Ed Malone's been serving as a pastor for 48 years, and then along with being a pastor, he enjoys raising black Angus cattle, carpentry, and writing. And he has a unique way of helping us understand principles in the Bible in a very simple way. Uh, this book, I, I went through this book, I read it over the weekend, and I've never had a book that I dog-eared the pages on more than this book, because every page I turned, I'm flipping, I want to go back to that. It, it is a, a very insightful book. Thanks for writing. Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share this message with, yeah. a, with a lot of people that I otherwise wouldn't know. Yeah, the message is, is kind of hard hitting. You, you talk out, you talk about the American church. Now, you're not talking about the church worldwide, because in some areas, the church is underground and it's, it's, it's thriving under pressure. But in the United States, you say that somehow we've, we've lost that, that we don't really feel like we need a, a commitment type of church. Sure. In areas like Africa, China, Russia, they have a faith worth dying for. Christianity has a convenient faith. They kind of go uh, to church every, a, a little bit, no, no real deep life-giving commitment to it. I read a recent poll uh, uh, evaluating American Christianity, and it said in the demographic of people over 70 years of age, over 84%. Uh, would identify some some belief in God or whether they go to church or not. But when we ratchet down two generations to the millennials, where do you think you come in? Oh, I'd say it's, it's way down there. We've had, probably lost half of them. Yes, and so it is 49%. Wow. Christianity's relevance in America, its desirability, is, is losing ground rapidly. You know, uh, I'm old enough to remember the old blue, the blue law concept where mm -hmm. Christianity had an influence in the public square. Couldn't go fishing on Sunday, couldn't <laughs> open the store on Sunday, that kind of thing. Yeah. And the uh, uh, first time I saw a store open on Sunday, I thought they were going to be consumed with fire and brimstone from heaven. You know, but Christianity's lost its influence in terms of, uh, of influencing the public square, in, influencing the direction of our country. Uh, when you look at American Christianity, Right now, Protestantism, uh, we, we can't agree on in, almost anything. We yeah. can't agree on the sanctity of life. There are churches that embrace uh, abortion and others uh, who stand for life. They, we can't agree on the qualifications for clergy, the definition of marriage, uh, the place that Scripture ought to hold in our life, authority, uh, have authority right. over us, and whether we actually go and hear feel good sermons, how to help yourself kind of sermons, or we're, we're confronted with the word. So Christianity, uh, when you say, I want to become a Christian, you know, there's a broad definition for that within America. Do you, you think this, yeah. this is, is basically in the, the big mega churches that are seeker friendly, where they're trying to attract people with coffee in the lobby and, you know, worship on big screens? Or does it, uh, do you think it applies to even the smallest churches right now about the people's individual commitment to following Christ? Absolutely, it, it's a it's a problem in church, whether it's big or small. Okay. Whether where you know uh, where the people are, are are really coming to fully understand what Jesus said and what He called us to. You know, as a counselor, you know, for my 50 years of ministry, I had people come to me with problems in their marriage, problems in their life, and that sort of thing. And sometimes in marriage counseling, I just stop and say, if you would just treat your wife as you should treat her as a Christian, your problems would go away. You know, if they, you could have uh, the manifest forgiveness and manifest, manifest grace and, and allow God to uh, move you rather than you being moved by your selfishness, all things would change. But yes, it's a problem. You know, uh, within America, Christianity has become an attachment. You know, in, in China, it, it is not an attachment. You, you're basing your life on it uh -huh. to attend that to attend that church to go underground and every day know that somebody may break in, and, and, but your commitment is at a different t level totally in that, in that fashion. Now, you'd, you'd mentioned that the, the age of people over 75 or 80 that, that believe in, in Christ. What's the difference in your book? You talk about the, the, the people that, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but uh, it's a little inconvenient to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Right. It, it is, it, you know, any translation of scripture uh, is, is difficult. You can't find an exact word for a Greek word. You know, the Greek word that we use, the English word believe, 
is a, a Greek word that means something a whole lot more uh, uh, than that. Okay, give me give, let me give you an example. I believe it's not going to rain, so I'm gonna pack a lunch and go to the uh, to the park and or go to the, the woods and and that's not that's not a high level of belief. You know, mm-hmm. if it rains, no big deal. I've not cost myself much. I just go home. Okay. But if I'm walking in the woods and I see a, a footbridge uh, spanning a cavern, and I look at it and say it's a bridge, it looks strong enough. And now, I, whether I believe it'll hold my weight or not, that's a different level of belief. Mm-hmm. It's like using the word love. I love ice cream. I love my dog. I love my wife. I love Jesus. Well, what does that word mean? You know, there's, there, when we say we believe in Jesus, my question in response to that is, do you believe enough that it affects your life? And they said, well, wait a minute. Go ahead. We, we look at, we look at uh, uh, Jesus and his, and his relationship with the, the Pharisees, Sadducees, the scribes, and uh, they believed in God, matter of fact, to the point where they'd taken the Old Testament and made a religion out of it and sort of lost their relationship with, with, with who God really was. Sure. You know, one of the things that, the reason that, one reason that pushed my book uh, there are two. First of all, that uh, Jesus has a theme in his teaching and preaching, and that theme is you can get close but not be in. You know, Pharisees were the model for their day. They tithed, they went to temple, they went to synagogue, they uh, they believed in the scriptures, you know, revered the scriptures and all those kinds of things. Now, but Jesus said, you're not in the kingdom, and the converts you make are now twice the child of hell. You have convinced them they're in when they're not, and you've given them a standard that's not a heart connection. And so Jesus not only spoke that to the Pharisees, but he, in a synagogue, he said, you claim Abraham as your father. I tell you, the devil is your father. And you say, whoa, wait a minute. They're in synagogue. They're reading the scriptures, and they think they're a part of the people of God. On he goes. He gives the parable of the ten maidens. All of them want to go, want to, go to the wedding. Five make adequate preparation. Five do not. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, one of his greatest teachings, he stops and said, now I've taught you what it should mean for you to be in the kingdom. Now, hear me when I say, not all that say it are in. Not all who say, Lord, Lord, are in the kingdom. He talks about at the end there, that you have to, both two men set out to build a house that's going to stand in the day of judgment, is the, is the, is the parable. And one stands, one falls. Both of them intended to be prepared but we're not prepared. And so it's a theme that he has that we, you know, he said the gates are narrow, the way hard, and few find it. You know, most people believe if I'm just, you know, like the old adage, I don't have to be, uh, I don't have to be able to outrun the bear, just have to be able to outrun you. Yeah. You know, you know as long as I think I'm, I'm better than average, I'm getting to go to heaven. Go to heaven. But Jesus said, few find it. Well, on a scale of one to 10, what would you call two? What would you call few? I'd call it two, maybe three out of ten. Well, we think eight or nine out of ten is going to get in because basically if you believe in God and you try to be good, well, that's not the standard that he set. You think if, if uh, we were preaching more the parables of Jesus and, the, and, the, and, and preaching on his actual life, that we were following the life of Christ rather than some of the things you hear preached in some of the American churches, you think people would... would run from that, or would they be drawn to that? Would they be drawn into the truth of Jesus? Okay, whether they run or not doesn't matter. You know, Jesus spoke truth that mm-hmm. they want to pick up rocks and stone him with. We need to be speaking truth. I say to folks, how can you follow someone you don't know? You, know, you say you're a follower of Jesus. Then give me five parables that Jesus taught. Wow. Give me three teachings that he gave that you used to model your life. How did you see him as he lived among the people there and how he acted? You know, his compassion for the woman with the issue of blood, his stopping to talk to Nicodemus, who was a tax collector, I mean, to Zacchaeus in the tree. You know, do you know Jesus enough to know how he would respond, how he did, you know, know, who he was and what he was like? You can't follow someone you don't know. And, uh, and, and so we need to be preaching Jesus. We need to be teaching Jesus. We need to help them understand because, sadly, a lot of folks think that as long as I go to church and believe in God, I'm in. But Jesus said, you've got to be born again. You've got to have the Spirit in you. And I need to be your shepherd. I need to be the voice that calls you out. 
I need to uh, be the power that moves through you. It's that miracle of life that Jesus came to give that uh, most folks don't even know exists or uh, any way of how to get to it. People go to church and they think that a 20 minute sermon, they go there, they watch the worship, they get a 20 minute sermon because they can't take much more than that than 20 minutes, but they're gonna go home and watch three hours of football or four hours of football on a Sunday afternoon that they can get into. But what do we need to do? Because some churches say we need to be a seeker church. Other people say we need to be a hard hitting church. We need to, what's going to bring about this reformation? Well, we, we've got to get back to the word. You know, when you lose contact with the word, mm -hmm. you know, I tell folks, you know, my sermon is, is, is little more than a snack. You know, and, until you get the Bible laying in your lap, yeah. and allow that spirit in you to be working through you, then uh, you, you're not going to grow. You know, I, I like, and, you know, and, and it's kind of sad to say, but, you know, baby Christians have somebody that's mixing a bottle and putting it in their mouth for 20 minutes on Sunday. You know, uh, mature Christians go, are challenged by the message to go home and chew on that and, and go deeper into that being led by the spirit. You know, the, the situation in the church today is, is no different than it's been throughout history. For 600 years, God sent prophets to a group of people who claimed to be the people of God, who thought they were the people of God, who fully believed that. And the prophets go in and say, I hate your assembly. God says, I hate your assemblies. I hate your music. I don't listen to you because your, your, your meeting doesn't affect your life. You leave here, go home and, and sell the poor for a pair of sandals. You know, he said, you know, this is not what I'm about. If your relationship to me doesn't affect your relationship with others, then it's disconnected. We are not connected in that way. And so Jesus, when he came on the scene, he was confronting the people. You know, just like uh, they wanted to kill him because he wanted to heal somebody on the Sabbath. And he says, is that your view of God? that you are to kill a man who's trying to heal somebody and he happens to be on the Sabbath? Now, what view of God do you have in that in regard? And then as, as we went on, as was predicted by the scriptures, you know, the, the faith is going to, you know, the first three centuries of persecution of Christianity, they stayed on course because it was a faith they had to, work, to believe in enough to be willing to die for it. But once it became legal, all of a sudden, now, we get to go into what we want. We got, we, it's not costly. It doesn't cost us anything to, to follow Jesus. And, and so, we, it, so where we are today, it's not any different than it's been throughout all of history. The church and, and those who think that the people of God move away from that heart connection with God. After the break. We share the gospel. Number one, we share the gospel by, by giving ministries that are doing great work. We give them an opportunity to share the why of the work that they're doing. And then we ask our writers to highlight the gospel message at the end somehow. That's coming up next on Viewpoint. Our culture is moving away from a biblically-based lifestyle faster than ever in history. Even many believers struggle to explain their own viewpoint on who Jesus really is. God says in the Old Testament that my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. That's why TV44 created Viewpoint with Bob Lacey, a program that discusses biblical issues and how they relate to our culture today. Now in our second season, Viewpoint is hitting more topics head on than ever this year. Every Viewpoint program is produced without any commercial advertising, so no topics are off limits. But we couldn't do this show without the support of our financial partners. Maybe you've never supported a Christian media ministry before, but in today's world, our message is needed more than ever, and it only takes a minute to give. Go to WTLW.com and click Get Involved, then Donate. Your gift of $20, $50, or even $100 will help continue the outreach of TV44's Viewpoint program to impact your hometown and the world. We recently had Marvin Miller on Viewpoint, where he shared about his large family of adopted special needs children. In a world that seems to embrace the complex, Marvin has chosen the life of Ohio's Amish country and has taken it a step further by publishing a magazine that you need to take the time to read. 
Here's that interview. Uh, during that whole time, uh, you, you had worked for a newspaper o over in central Ohio mm -hmm. and uh, began to see some changes going on in that neighborhood and in that, in that area of central Ohio. Mm -hmm. And now we have a magazine called Plain, Plain Values. And you folks have got to take a look at this. This is, this is truly unique. And tell me about how this whole thing started because it, it's, people don't read anymore. They, us people. I mean, there's a lot of people right. that, that I, we read. We read a lot of different things. But right. there's a lot of people that just everything's on a, on a screen someplace. Yeah. And magazines are fading fast in a lot of cases. And you stepped into it and said, nope, we're going to do a magazine. Yeah. I've, I've always <laughs> been. not that simple. But how did that, that happen? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a real fun ride. Uh, Lisa and I have always been readers. And I, I personally am a huge print junkie. I, I love books and, and magazines. And... 10, 12 years ago, when our daughter was in the NICU. Uh, That's natal ICU. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, when she was in the hospital, uh, my prayer quickly became, okay, Lord, uh, there's a lot of expense coming. Uh, please help me be able to afford all this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, rather selfishly was praying about our family's future. And, and an Amish client of mine made a comment, and I took that idea and we ran a few tests and did a mailing piece to about 10,000 Amish homes across the state of Ohio. And it worked and they loved it. And, and, and our clients got results and they, and they basically said, Marlon, do this again. Well, at that time, you, you talk about an Amish client, you were selling newspaper advertising, right? Right. In central Ohio, right. in, in Amish country. That's right. So you were selling newspaper advertising. So he saw and some of this, how this idea you published one issue of this? Was it well, called Plain Values? It time? was It was called Just Plain Values. Just Plain Values. And it was a pure wow. mailing piece. There wasn't a single piece of editorial in it. It was solid ads, oh, solid really? ads. And I just wanted to run a test to see if that purified mailing list, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. as, as far as a, a purely Amish mailing mm -hmm. list, would do what I thought it might. And it did. And, and I had already quit my job. And, and left because I didn't want to compete with my old employer. Yeah, you're selling ads. And, right, exactly. Uh -huh. And so I left, uh, left that company and, and we ran a few tests. And I told my wife, I said, there, I think this has some legs. So I think this is going to work. We need to think and pray through the actual model, yeah. you know, the actual uh, thing that we're going to publish. And so as, as, as it kind of took shape, uh, we, we settled on a few pillars that we wanted this work mm -hmm. to kind of rest on. What this, what this would, just the basis of what this, every issue would be. Right, right, as, yeah. And what, what, what were those? Well, we wow. share the gospel. Number one, we share the gospel in, in the magazine. And, really? and we do that, yeah. Uh, we do that by, by giving ministries that are doing great work all over the planet and, mm -hmm. in, and in our backyard, we give them an opportunity to share the why of the work that they're doing. And then we wow. ask our writers to highlight the gospel message at the end somehow. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, that, that happens, I think, you know, for the majority of, of, of the time. Um, but then we also uh, talk about the dignity of kids with special needs. Yeah, we I talk that, about uh, the, you, I mean, this love, joy, and family. It's just the dignity of children with special needs. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it, it, and that it's been good. So that's it's that's one of the pillars. That's one of the pillars. To share um, the gospel, highlight the the beauty of children with special needs. Yeah, and then we talk about the about the beauty of adoption as well. Ah. Uh, there is I, John Piper, I think said it so well when he said that God created the universe to showcase adoption. Uh, there is there's no mm -hmm. better manifestation of this kind of adoption sure. than this. We kind are of adoption. adopted, right? Yeah. Exactly. Into the family of God. So, yeah. And so that's, that's three of the pillars. That is. And then the other one, there's a few more, mm -hmm. but uh, the other big one is that I wanted to be able to connect an Amish uh, readership that, that 10, 12 years ago did not have an iPhone or you know, a phone in their mm -hmm. pocket uh, to the work being done over here because I knew there's a lot of wealth in the Amish community mm -hmm. because they work hard and they, they save. Work, yes. They are, they're brilliant business folks. Mm -hmm. and with, Which always amazes me, brilliant business people with an eighth grade education. Mm -hmm. That's right. That tells That's you right. something about what we've done with our education <laughs> system. <doesn't laughs> I think it does. <laughs> well, we, we wanted to be a stepping stone between that, you know, that 
uh, you know, those families mm -hmm. and the folks on the mission field, you know, that need prayer and ah, money. Yeah. And, and, and in some cases that, that the readers can actually say, hey, I can go do that. I can go help yeah. build that house. Mm -hmm. And so it's, he, uh, the Lord has just really knocked our socks off with, with the response. Uh, we, we have raised hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for ministries. Wow. It's, it's been fantastic. Yeah, I see in this one, the cover is on uh, basically providing water. Uh, for for some community, I'm not sure where. I, right. But the cover is uh, about life water. Yeah. Uh, you've got some standard writers too. I, I notice uh, uh, Rory, Rory Feek. Uh, yeah. You got you got several people that will write articles on a regular basis for the magazine now. Right. Yeah. When we started, it it was not it, the uh, the caliber of of plain values today is is not something that I would have mm -hmm. even imagined, wow. you know, 10, 12 years oh, ago. Oh, well, the photography is uh, fan fantastic. The cover photography, yeah. and, and you look at some of these, and they're just yeah. beautiful stuff. Well, thank but, you. But uh, how many writers do you have? Uh, we have, there's the probably writers. a team of, of five to seven, uh, you know, that we that mm -hmm. we pull from. They're subcontractors, and uh -huh. they just do a, a just a yeah. wonderful job. And you have you have standard features so. in the magazine as well. I mean, you have this, the pillars of the magazine, what you want to accomplish with it, but the standard features that, right. that families can get excited about looking forward to when, it, when it's going to show up. Yeah. What are some of those features that you're, you're looking at? Well, we have Joel Salatin uh, that, uh, that uh, he writes a monthly column for us about farming and, and, and the integration of how God built creation and mm -hmm. just, just a, a fabulous homesteading, uh, you know, chunk of content. Uh, Rory Feek writes about uh, just, just the intersection of, of life and how to, how to, you know, dig and plant yeah. roots deep while soaring and you know trying to trying to grow your wings and yeah, be a, all that he's a uh, that, i was going to say academy award but no he's a, he's a uh, yeah, he's a grammy award grammy winning, award winning right <laughs> writer and and uh, right. singer so yeah, and yeah. but you've got uh, in this case you've got ice fishing uh yeah. changing the animals <laughs> move homemade saltine crackers yeah. but uh, a lot of things that would appear uh, appeal to the Amish and advertising that they mm -hmm. they may not know is available to them right uh, products and things like that has it has it been a one-way flow so far of of just the Amish taking this in and saying this is a great magazine for us well what's happened that's that's how we that's how we intended it to mm -hmm. be uh, but over the years as as more and more folks outside the Amish communities have seen plain values they will call us or they'll email us and say hey I saw this magazine I I'd like to get that too. How do I get it? Yeah. And so it's it's been a real joy. I mean, today we print nearly fifty thousand each month. Wow. So yeah. And you start out. This was basically it was it was ad supported, and you're right. just sending them out to subscribers. Right. For free. For free. That mm -hmm. this this doesn't look like a free magazine. <laughs> it's well today it's not. It shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. Today it's not. So. I mean, you look at uh, Mount Hope yeah. harness and shoes. It's it's just a lot of advertising yeah. in there, but. It, uh, some great story, and with a with a uh, there's there's a lot of people focused now on getting back outside and, and getting back into. You see a lot of homesteading magazines now, and a lot of homesteading on on YouTube, things like that. Right. That uh, uh, just an Englishman, <laughs> non Amish, yeah, would would pick this up and say, "Hey, here's how I can raise chickens." <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It's it's been it's been really interesting to watch when I look at the state of of a you know. Of, of today's culture, mm -hmm. uh, there there is a mass of people that are yearning to go back, yeah. you know, to print. I, I think I think everybody is tired of their phone by the time that they get home. Yeah, uh, they're, they're tired, tired of going like screen. this, and they'd rather go like this. Right. There's something. something. Yeah, there's see, something so. Too, yeah, yeah. There's something so wonderful about holding something in your hand, uh, and and. J just a quick aside, I, I find it so fascinating that God created language and gave us the ability, uh, the ability to pull a, a thought out of, our, out of our mind and then put it on paper and that comes out of a tree. And, and, and it's, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, and, so, and, and communicate that. Yeah. What's, uh, what's the response been? I mean, is it growing in the Amish community or did, did you hit a saturation in Ohio and that's as far as it goes? Or what's, what's happened? We have, How do they move this around? Well, we... <clears throat> The Amish population is doubling every 20 years. And so, yeah, it is. Wow. And when, when families get married, you know, kids mm -hmm. move out, uh, it, we, we get calls and letters every day 
yeah. uh, where they're saying, hey, I'm moving and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to stop getting plain values. And so they'll move their, you know, their address, they'll update it. And, and uh, it's been, that's been a lot of fun. You, you mentioned uh, 10 years ago, whatever, 12 years ago, Amish didn't have cell phones. I mean, they, they've had them for a little while, but right. you see, uh, uh, just because you're so close to the Amish, uh, especially with this and your history, uh, and they're doubling every 20 years. Yeah. You see it, you see, do you see a change in the culture because of technology that's hit them and kind of upside the head? That, I mean, they, the culture just crashed into them in a lot of cases, uh, yeah. especially in communication. Yeah. You see a change in the, in the, in the community itself. It, it is definitely changing. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know where it's going to end, uh, but, but it is, it is, it is different than it was 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah I mean, they, uh, they don't want to be attached or, or, or tethered to, to modern society, but I mean, they right. can have, we see the phone booths on the road where if they had an emergency, they could go to that phone booth and, and make an emergency call. Right. But now you do see them carrying cell phones and, and things like that. Yeah. What would concern me is, is uh, what that opens up to Amish teenagers. Yeah. The, it's, the, the population grows, does, does, the, does, does their community grow? Or are, are kids going to be leaving because what they see on that cell phone when they pick up an iPhone and look at something in Germany? Right. right. I don't know if we, we've actually had uh, a local sheriff's department uh, reach out to us uh, regarding Amish uh, teenagers and smartphones mm -hmm. and the dangers that they might be yeah. very ignorant of. Are, are their and parents aware? I mean, the community itself, like their pastors, are they aware of the danger that might be in that? That little tiny device. I have. don't. I don't think many of them are. Mm -hmm. Now, some of them are, mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, I, I don't know that yeah. they're really aware mm -hmm. of all the, of all the uh, the risks that right. it poses. Well, keep doing what you're doing with this, and how do we get a copy? <laughs> well, okay, you, how do I subscribe? <laughs> you sold me. Oh, how good. do I subscribe? Well, you can go to plainvalues.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's it's right there. There's a big uh, big subscribe yeah. button at the top right. And it's a bi-monthly. So it's actually every month. Every month. Yeah. That is a. Yeah, we do it every month. We got a staff of a hundred so. people doing this. No, there's only about eight or nine of us. And you're yeah. putting this thing together every month. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. I I. When God calls you to do something, you, you do it. He he <laughs> has right. he has brought us a team, Bob, that I couldn't have imagined. Yeah. It, it's it's been fantastic. Well, it's it's a beautiful magazine, so. and again, go to plainvalues.com. Right. And they can and they can subscribe. Ab absolutely. Thank you for being with us again so, today. We appreciate it. Thank you. You can go to plainvalues.com for more information about how you can get this great magazine. As we do each week, I remind you that this show and the ministries of TV44 are supported by viewers just like you. So we'd appreciate your financial support. I'm Bob Placey. Thanks for joining me. For more interviews on demand, plus additional resources from today's guests, go to WTLW.com and click on the Viewpoint tab. If you are enjoying Viewpoint, we would appreciate your financial gift so we can continue to produce more programs.